Hello and welcome to the Green Style Inspire Tights Sew Along. Um, I'm Sarah and I blog at Sewing with Sarah and I work with Green Style Creations. And this week I'm going to take you through the process of sewing your own Inspire Tights. Um, the Inspire Tights pattern is one of my favorite patterns. I find that it's really versatile. Um, I use it for both athletic wear and an everyday legging. Um, and there are a couple hacks that I might, um, that I'll refer to during the sew along and link for you um, that give it an even broader range of options. The Inspires um, offer a couple of unique things that are different from the Super G's or the Strides that you might be familiar with. Um, they do have the same fit as the Strides, so if you've made the Strides before and you know what your sizing is of those, you can use the same size in, in the Inspires, the same with the Super G's. Um, the Inspires, like the Strides, are a little bit less compressive than the Super G's, but I still find them really awesome for working out. Um, the Inspires have a few options. They have an option with, that is just kind of a, a basic legging with a, a side seam down the side of the leg um, and then a triangular gusset. They have an option for a high rise waistband, which I really love because I feel that kind of holds me in when I exercise, especially when I'm running or even just kind of every day. I just really like the feel of that. Um, they also have an optional angled insert for both the front and the back um, that goes above the knee. So it'll be kind of an angled insert um, across the front and the back of the leg. And if you do that in something like mesh, it can really make it stand out and look cool. They also have an option for a back of the knee insert, which is another great opportunity to put some mesh for a little bit of extra ventilation and airflow, as well, well as a variety of length options. Um, I tend to like the capri or the cropped length because I'm a shorter person. Um, remember that green style drops for a height of 5'7". So if you are considerably shorter than that and you wanna make a full length tight, you would wanna either make the cropped version like I do or go through the process of actually shortening your pattern. Um, which is not at all hard to do. Generally, it's um, a half an inch for every inch shorter than you, uh, you are than the pattern is drafted for. Um, the same with if you're taller than five foot seven, then you would lengthen using using that same process. Add a half an inch for every inch taller you are than five foot seven. So um, the Inspires are one of my favorite patterns, not only because they wear well, but also because they sew up really quickly. So I'm going to give you some ticks, uh, tips and tricks in the sew along, um, but these are one of my favorite patterns because they can really literally get done in the space of a, a toddler nap time, which for me can be anywhere between 45 minutes and two and a half hours. I never know what I'm going to get. So I always love the Inspires because I know I can get something done in that time. Um, it always feels good to walk away from nap time with a finished product or if you're pressed for time and you're working and you just have a little bit of time to sew in the mornings or the evenings, the Inspires are a great pattern that's really gratifying to get it done. Um, they are on sale for the sew along. There's no code needed. All the green style leggings um, pa patterns are on sale for the sew along. So, um, you know, the everyday yoga pants, the Mandex, you know, the Inspires, the Strides. Um, there's a bundle for the girls and the um, there's a bundle for the women's and the girls strides together now. Um, and so all of those, the Lucy leggings, all of those are on sale for the sew along and I would highly recommend um, go ahead and checking them out. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through the process of sewing the Inspires. I have already done a sew along for the Super G's and um, there's been a sew along in So So English for the strides. So this is gonna kind of round out that collection um, and hopefully give you some tricks that you need to get these done even um, along the way. And, and do a great job on them. So um, first thing I want to talk to you about is fabric. Um, the Inspires require a 50% stretch, you know, four-way stretch fabric. So that means that, you know, not only this is the selvage of the fabric on the top, not only is it going to stretch this way, but it's also going to stretch this way, four ways, okay, and at least 50%. And there's a handy measuring guide on the third page of your pattern. So if you're unsure about whether your fabric has the right stretch or you want to go shopping, you can just print that out, take it with you, stretch your fabric, measure it, make sure that it fulfills the stretch requirements. This is a suplex fabric, um, and it's just, you know, suplex is awesome for leggings. It has the right weight. Um, you do want to make sure you're not using something too thin that might end up see-through as they get stretched. Um, 
you know, sometimes that can happen if you use a fabric that's too thin. So, you know, always take, you know, the, the weight of the fabric into account, um, but I'm gonna be using that for mine. And then um, if you're wanting to add one of the inserts, like the mesh insert on the back of the knee, it doesn't have to be mesh, but it could be, um, or those front angled inserts, then you'll need some fabric for that as well. Um, these take anywhere um, from, you know, one and three eighths inch fat or three eighths yards fabric, um, you know, up to for the full length to maybe just a half a yard for the short. So it really depends on what you're going to make as to how much fabric you're going to need. Um, I could usually get away with just a yard when I make um, the craft or capri version because I don't I don't need a ton of, of length there. So um, you know, go ahead and, and take a look at the sizing on page three of your pattern, figure out your size. Um, I would, you know, if you're needing to grade between sizes, go ahead and do that. Um, if your hips are um, smaller, let me think for a second. If your hips are a size bigger than your waist, then I would recommend just grading, you know, using your hip size until you get to the very top where the waistband attaches, and then grading it down to the size for your waistband and using that smaller waistband. Um, if you have the opposite situation and your hips are smaller than your waist, um, then you could do one of two things. Um, you could actually kind of grade out the top of your waistband so it's more of a rectangle and less of a kind of trapezoid, or um, you could just go ahead and you know grade at, um, down for the hips once you get to the, you know, use the waistband size for the top of the um, pants and then grade down so that they're kind of straighter. Um, so those are the kind of some of the main issues. There's always tweaks you can make to the fit of the crunch depending on your personal um, you know curves there. I tend to shorten the rise a little bit by taking a little wedge off of um, the front of the pants and I have a, a blog post that shows how I do that and I'll link that. But um, other than that, you know, these, these have an awesome fit. So um, go ahead and join me. I'll take you down to my cutting table now and we'll go ahead and cut them out. Um, and the, the only really tricky part about cutting them out is if you're using the side ins or the front and back inserts, you just wanna make sure they keep track of which is the top and which is the bottom of the insert so you don't sew them wrong and have to rip them out. So I'm gonna take you down to the cutting table now and we'll get started to cut. So I'm gonna start um, this portion of the video by just showing you some of these different options that are on the pattern. So if you take a look and you look at, this is the back for example, um, the back leg, you'll notice that it has this angled section here. It says cut here for optional angled insert, discard this section. So if you wanted to add the angled inserts on the back and the front, or um, just one, either the back or the front, you would trace what's above this, and you would trace what's below this. And then you would throw this part away, and there's a separate printed back angled insert that you would also trace, okay? so. Just want to make sure that you understand that you don't need this piece if you are doing the angled insert. You would trace what's above it and below it and then use the piece that says back angled insert or front angled insert. Same thing with the back of the knee insert. Um, this is only on the back leg piece, but if you're using the back of the knee insert, you would trace what's above it, the upper back and the lower back, and you would throw away this section. And then there's a separate printed back of the knee insert um, that you would use instead on your pattern. And that's over here, okay? So I just wanna be clear about that. When you trace them, I would highly recommend um, labeling them as they are in the pattern. You can see here, I know it's upside down, but it says top. You're going to thank yourself for identifying that both on your fabric and on your traced pattern piece. So I'm gonna show you. I'm going to be using the pieces with the angled inserts, okay? So if that's the case, then I've got this upper back piece. I've got my back insert and I've labeled my top here. And then, move it down a little bit. I've got my lower back. 
And if you look at the leg, when you line them up overlapping the seam allowances, you'll notice that it's straight. If you flip this over and you get it backwards, it's gonna look like this. And then if you compensate, your leg's gonna start to look all wonky. So don't do that. Make sure that you're labeling um, the top and the bottom and keeping those straight. You could put a little pin in your fabric um, or a piece of tape or a clip or whatever you need to do to remind yourself what the top and bottom of those inserts are. So you're gonna have that for the back if you're putting the back insert in. And then the same for the front if you're adding the front inserts. Okay, so I have a lower front, I have a front insert, and I have an upper front. And you can see how that makes a nice straight line when I overlap the seam allowances. Now I mentioned adjusting crotch curves. I like to shorten the rise by taking just a teensy bit off right here. Um, and that just makes the rise slightly shorter. So you're going to want to cut, go ahead and cut those pieces out. Um, if you're using the plain legging, then you're just going to have, you know, a front and a back. This is my back. You're going to have a back leg piece and you're going to have a front leg piece. Okay, so you're going to cut those out. Now there is a hack on the Green Style blog for making the inspires all one piece. So this is the front, this is the back. And essentially what we've done is overlap the seam allowances of the front and the back to create a single leggings piece. This makes really nice fast um, sew and it's something that you can consider doing if you want to have a single leg pattern piece. It's really nice if you have a print that you don't want to disrupt with a side seam. Um, I've made quite a few pairs that way. So that's an option as well. And then of course the back of the knee insert if you were going to do that instead of the um, you know, angled back insert. And then of course you're gonna have your waistband pieces. You're gonna have an outer and an inner waistband piece, and you're going to have a triangular gusset. Um, and that just looks like this, and you're going to cut two of those. Make sure that you're paying attention to the stretch. When you cut um, your pattern pieces, you always want the stretch going you know, across them, across the leg, across the body, um, because that's where the most of the stress is going to be put on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out all my pattern pieces and then I'll show you what I've got. Um, and then we'll stop for the day. So I've done all my cutting. I have my inner and my outer waistband pieces, two of each. I've got my back inserts and my front inserts. Remember, these are only necessary if you're doing them. Um, I'm not doing the back of the knee insert. These are the above the knee inserts. Um, but I've put a pin at the top of each one um, and that will come in really handy later. So I've got those. I like to clip my pattern pieces together because I tend to lose them. I've got two gussets. I've got um, an upper back, or two upper backs, two lower backs, a lower front, and an upper front. So I've got all of those pieces. If you're doing the um, one piece lay with, that's based on the hack on the Green Style blog, um, you're just gonna have something that looks like this, where it's all one piece, the front, back, two of those. You're still gonna need the waistband and the two gussets, but that's gonna make it pretty simple. So I've got all this here, I'm really excited because this is some really delicious um, fleece-backed leggings fabric, and I'm using this really fun striped mesh from the Fabric Fairy. So I'm really excited to see how these turn out. Um, I will meet you back here tomorrow and we'll start sewing them up. Um, if you have any questions on this pattern or any of the other green style leggings patterns that are part of the sew along, um, please post it um, under today's post so that someone can help you out. Um, and these videos will always be available as a resource as well. So if you need to catch up at a later date or you want to review them, they'll always be there um, both on my blog and on YouTube as well. So if um, I look forward to seeing what you guys are going to create and which patterns you're going to choose and if any of you are going to choose to try out the Inspires, I'm especially excited about that. So happy sewing!